Yo, Ryan O, behavior analyst and creator. All things behavior analysis is what you find on this channel. We nerd out on psychology here, and today, a little known but really, really valuable tool for practitioners in behavior analysis or other helping professions. When a clinician is contracted to complete an assessment with a client, there are a few central things that have to be completed. First of all, asking the question of, is this really a behavioral thing? That is, can we rule out medical and biological related causes? Next, how can the practitioner understand the world of the person seeking help through empirical information, a measurement of the behavior actually in context? How do we get that information? And then how can the practitioner take into account and involve the client's perspective, goals, values, and ambitions. Now, there's a lot more to it than these three points, which is why you need a qualified professional, but this is information on a tool that I found useful and I wanted to make others aware of. In 1974, almost 50 years ago, Israel Goldiamond created what's called the Constructional Questionnaire. To show the value of this, I need to first explain our assumptions of how behavior is influenced. See, nonlinear behavior analysis can be shown in a way through this Goldiamond and Thompson's conceptualization model that I've shown here. I actually covered this in depth in my continuing education course called Beyond the Task List, but let's just flash to a snippet of that real quick so you can understand it. So what did this look like? Well, his actual conceptual model consisted of discriminative stimuli, discriminative uh, stimulators, things that we've seen in all of our models so far. Uh, then that led to things like behavior, the response, and then you had your consequences. This little plus minus is not a plus minus, so I'll elaborate on that in just a minute, uh, but you had your consequences. Now, he also had things for terms when it comes to, uh, think about them as kind of rule governed behavior, abstractional and instructional control. That's what it's talked about as. And those can also lead to, as well as behavior and consequences. Then there was potentiating variables. Potentiating variables, think of them as motivation operations, but they weren't just tied to the consequence. You could potentiate uh, stimuli, responses, or consequences. So it was a little bit more than that. And then there's stimulus props. The interesting thing here is there's a whole lot of stuff around me that I'm not interacting with. It's not part of the contingency whatsoever. Now, as soon as I say it, it's going to move into that. So I could, for example, say these six posters behind me uh, were stimulus props prior to me mentioning them. Now there's some sort of uh, component but the point is, is there's other things always going on in the environment that may or may not be impacting things, sorry, that are not impacting things in the moment because they are not within like the perception and the, the contingency that's going on for that organism. All right, so that quick side note on the plus minus thing from Gold Diamond and Thompson's Blue Books. They refer to the operant consequences as S plus minus, it looks like, but it's really a little bit different. It should be stressed here that the plus minus doesn't stand for plus and minus, nor increase or decrease, but stands for the matrix of consequences and the bar of extinction. Consequences that are events will be referred to as matrix ent entries or payoffs, as opposed to the non-events of extinction. So if you pause and you kind of look here, it should make some sense of, there's more to it than what we may think from our past history. It is not the plus minus. There's actually, they're explaining the different outcomes that may happen. In addition, nonlinear approaches ask questions like, what happens if someone does not engage in a particular behavior? Or what are the various conditions under which this occurs doesn't occur, and what are all the other stimuli in each of those environments that are influencing the response occurring or not occurring? It's contrasted from a linear approach that's taught in most behavior analytic programs today and is, in my opinion, far superior, that is, the nonlinear approach, as it's rooted in the reality of our world. Everything we experience is nonlinear in nature, and not only has Gold Diamond and his students' work shown this empirically, but it's an approach that's taken by other sciences as well. So, how are practitioners using this nonlinear approach? Well, it's combined with our unique approach to viewing behavior through the lens of the function of the behavior or the effect a particular response has on the environment. You can oftentimes think of this as the outcome of a response, but it is always technically measured through the changes in the environment that is produced by your behavior. So the constructional questionnaire is, quote, used to obtain information specifically for behavioral programs in clinical, educational, industrial, organizational, as well as, as well as other applied settings. And it helps assess clients' current behavior patterns, values, et cetera, that contribute to the issues that they are seeking help with. It also collects historical information that helps explain why the behavior is occurring. And it's also an exploration of the resources available to the client to help them achieve their goals, such as social groups, loved ones, or different technology available to them. And it also has clear objectives that they can start to reach by participating in the program that they develop with the skilled professional. So what are the questions? Well, there's a lot, 
but I'm just gonna show you really quickly a few of the different sections here. The article is freely available though. They have a nice introduction that you can see here where they just kind of set the stage of explaining what is going to be asked and why they're going to ask these sort of things. Question one, and these are sometimes broken down into multiple sub questions, are looking at the outcomes that people are looking for if they were successful. It includes a very interesting question about an alien coming down that is, uh, I don't know, it's interesting, you should check it out. It's usually a point of talk amongst professionals of, is it relevant? And most people argue, yes it is, that have used this. The next section is on areas changed or unchanged, trying to dig into different things that are going well and not going well in one's life. The next section, looking at change history, what has been tried in the past and how has that worked out for the person. And then different assets, what is available to potentially be used to help achieve different behavioral outcomes. And then there's also consequences, trying to pull apart what may be maintaining this response. And then they wrap up with this completion and this turnabout phase where we're looking at, is there anything else that was missed? And also the availability of the option to be able to ask questions back to the skilled professional. So how useful has been engaging in completing this questionnaire been and how it designs and alludes to building services for somebody. But just a quick pause here. This video is brought to you by patrons. It takes a lot to run this channel. People like you support my efforts on this channel financially. And for three years now, four almost, I've lost money on this channel, actually lost money, because creating these videos is, well, important. This field's important and there are important people doing important things that need to be heard by people like you. So if it's something that you look to help support other people like you, donate a little bit, get some extra perks, and if this is something you're interested in, the link is down below. I also have a lot of continuing education courses you can check out at thebehavioracademy.com, um, but let's get back to the video. Well, it's been applied to different areas such as stuttering, anxiety, self-control, psychotic hallucinations, and the therapeutic relationship between therapists and clients. And in TVA Joe Lang's words from his brilliant article on Gold Diamond, he said, quote, Gold Diamond began to develop insights as to what constitutes an effective functional analytic approach to psychology. I want to underscore how large of a statement that is. The approach is a functional approach to psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is the use of psychological methods, particularly when based on regular personal interactions with adults to help a person change behavior and overcome problems in desired ways, loosely. And there may be variations depending on where you look, but that's the gist. And this is an entirely different approach to understanding psychology than what was mainstreamed and allows for a natural science approach, rid of any hypothetical entities and odd constructs that modern psychology just loves to use. And, and it takes them out of that equation just real tangible tools that practitioners can use without any fluff or worldly phenomena to explain. All right, so this is the kicker. There are two paths to diving into this more. First, you can go read the seminal article, the 1974 90-page, yes, 90-page article by Gold Diamond. I know it's a lot, but I would pair that with Ling's summary on Gold Diamond that's also linked down below. Now, the version that I have access to that I've shown you here is the one that's freely available that you can go check out. However, there's also a brand new book not too long actually, that just came out from for the eager professional that I have also linked down below. It's fantastic, I went through it with a reading group. It really, really is a good succinct approach and it's, it's built for behavior analysts or people that are in general psychology as well or psychology related fields. Uh, it doesn't have too much terminology, explains things. It's really good. I hope this video enticed you to maybe check some of the stuff out. Maybe check out that book and the other resources to consider mastering the material in some sort of respectable, ethical manner that helps your clients. All right, I hope you learned something. Like, share, subscribe. That stuff actually makes a difference. And remember, you can support me through the links down below. That's your daily VA.